In the book of Revelation, Jesus sternly rebukes the church of Laodicea. I am currently standing in that city, here in the modern day country of Turkey. Now, in this class, we are discussing letting go of our personal rights. Now, to be honest with you, when I went through the program, this is one of the hardest classes that I went through. And it was really hard for me to come to grips with the fact that I don't have rights. Speaking to this community, Jesus says this, because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and I have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. At the time this letter is written, here in Laodicea, there is a booming economy. This is the banking center of this side of the world. An earthquake comes through this region and it decimates many cities throughout this area. Now, Laodicea decides to refuse Rome's help in the rebuilding of this city because they wanted to finance the rebuilding themselves. Now, neighboring cities gladly received the money from Rome in the rebuilding of their city. So history would tell us just as Jesus did that the Laodiceans were rich and they thought they were in need of nothing. Some would say, I have the right to wealth, health, and happiness and to be respected. But as we are learning in this class, the scripture calls us to give up our rights. Now I know that's hard because in the West, it is ingrained in us that we have rights. This is mine. And the scripture would combat that. When these moments arise and we become frustrated and angry, we must take a second and pause and realize that this is an alarm clock waking us up to the fact that there are rights in our lives that we're still clinging to or else we wouldn't get upset. Jesus says, if someone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other as well. If someone takes your coat, give them your shirt. Now this is a hard saying of Christ, but it is truth that Jesus calls us to die to ourselves. A rabbi named Hillel says it this way, that my humiliation is my exaltation. Jesus goes on to tell us that if we want to become great, we've got to become least. If we want to become master, we must become servant. If we want to be first, we must become last. Now this calls us to die to ourselves and to live for the blessing and the rights of others and to die to ourselves and live to Christ. Jesus says in Revelation, I know your works, but you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. One thing is for certain, Christ will not tolerate a lukewarm life. He calls us to die to ourselves and live to him. Colossae is just a three and a half hour walk from here. You may recognize that because Paul writes a letter to that city. Now Colossae is interesting because there is a mountain there and it is called Mount Cadmus. And on top of Mount Cadmus, there is snow. Even right now, as I sit in the land, I can see the snow from where I'm standing. Now that snow melts in the spring and it goes down into the Lycus River Valley right where uh, Colossae is located. And it creates rivers of crystal clear, refreshing water. Water that you can irrigate your fields with, grow crops with, water that you can drink and that is refreshing. Now, just a two and a half hour walk on the other side of where I'm standing is a place called Heropolis. And in Heropolis, there is hot water. There are these cascading tubs on the sides of the mountain created from the lime deposits. In these pools, there is hot water. Now, people would travel for miles and miles just to dip in these therapeutic healing waters. But here we are in Laodicea, in between crystal clear, refreshing water and hot healing water. And we're in Laodicea where there is a water problem. Not a coincidence that Jesus is calling them out as being lukewarm because the water here in Laodicea is lukewarm. It's brought in from miles away through pipes and there's so much sediment in these pipes that they would just abandon the pipes and put a new pipe in because there are so many sediments and then by the time the water gets here, it is lukewarm. So this water is tepid and unrefreshing to the people here in Laodicea. 
So Jesus is calling them out and saying, you're lukewarm. I wish that you were cold and refreshing like Colossae. I wish that you were warm and therapeutic and inviting like Heropolis on the other side. You say you're rich, but really you're lukewarm. It's not a coincidence that Jesus is using these references and illustrations as he speaks to this community. The message of Christ is not all negative here. He says this, I counsel you to buy for me gold refined in the fire. Not the gold that they're wealthy in, gold from God that is refined in the fire. That you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed. That the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. It's crazy because right here in this town of Laodicea, there is an eye salve that's exclusively made here. There's actually a book that was authored in antiquity, an optometry book that talks about the eye. So this place specializes in seeing and an eye salve. And Jesus is saying, I wish that you would get for me gold refined in the fire that you would put eye salve on your eyes so that you could see that the things that you're clinging to in this life are meaningless. Gold that will rust and decay, but buy for me gold refined in the fire. Become hot or become cold. I love this because Jesus ends by saying this, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. There's still an invitation, even though they're lukewarm and they're broken and they're lost to sit at the table of Christ and to break bread and partake in the fellowship with the Lord. But you've got to recognize where you're at in your lukewarm state. You've got to recognize that you're clinging to to rights that are not relinquished to him. Let those go, die to yourself, be freed and become strong in Christ. He wants to restore a fellowship with you and to remove the things from your life that keep you from him and from ineffective Christianity.